Hi everyone, it's Amanda. Today I'm going to be doing a dark romance reading vlog where I read three new dark romance books that are on KU. Well, I'm so ready. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I know you guys love dark romance content. So here it is. So the first one that I really want to read is Lovely Bad Things by Trisha Wolf. All I know about this one is we have a serial killer who is in some sort of asylum and now someone needs his help to solve a case. And that just sounds so, so good. And then I also want to read Fragmented Illusions by Marie Anne. I think this one is more suspense romance. Not quite sure the plot of this. I love to go into dark romances blind. So you're along with me on this journey. And then we have The Devil Tainted Us, which is a gothic romance with suspense vibes as well. So those are the three books I'm planning to read. We'll see what happens. Be sure to like and subscribe down below if you love dark romance like me. And let's get started. Update on Lovely Bad Things by Trisha Wolf. It is so good so far. So I'm 20% in, and at this point, we know our two characters. We have Helen, who's the crime scene investigator. She investigates really creepy and disturbing crime scenes exclusively. And one day, she's working on a scene where she meets Professor Callum Locke, who she is convinced is the killer at this particular scene at a university. And so at the trial, she testifies against him, which she never does. She usually stays in the shadows. She's just the investigator that tells a story and she leaves it at that. But in this one, she felt so compelled to take a stand. And at that point, the jury ruled that he was clinically insane, but he's locked up in a facility right now. Fast forward six months later, now she's at another crime scene and she's connecting it back to him. She's obsessed with him and he's obsessed with her as well. So we have that obsession going on that they both have for each other, but she's deeming it as she wants him in prison. And we don't really know what's going on in his head. We just know he's fixated on her and kind of obsessed with her too. So she ends up flying back to him in the correctional facility that he's at in order to get his help on a case because she thinks that it's connected to philosophy and there's a deeper meaning behind all of these crimes. And she's convinced he's a serial killer that is responsible for the Harbinger killings, which are crimes that have not been solved and they mysteriously stopped when he got put in the correctional facility. So she's trying to connect the dots, but also we don't know what's going on. And it's so good because I know there's gonna be so many twists and turns. So I'm just waiting, but I had to update because I feel like I'm just gonna like fly through this at this point right now what's happening is she's trying to get him to be on her team like get out of the correctional facility and help her with this case and i think it's gonna be so good when they end up teaming up together we get both perspectives in this book so we have some from him most from helen so far the setting is so atmospheric it's very dark academia with very creepy obviously tones to it and it is pretty graphic with the crime scenes in general so Safe to say I'm loving this. Safe to say it's probably gonna be a five star. I can't wait for the romance to come into play because right now you sense some tension between them. He like grabs her wrist at one point and you're like, oh, saucy. <laughs> okay, I'm 60% in and it just got steamy. I'm living. They have so much chemistry and like she's trying to deny it because she's working on a case and he's literally a suspect in a previous case, but it is so hot. Also, it's like the secret history, but steamy and I hate the secret history, but it has a lot of dark academia vibes along with like Aristotle, Socrates, all that stuff and like cults and secret societies. And they think that the suspect for these crimes is trying to reach the highest power type thing. And it just reminds me a lot of The Secret History, but with flavor. I'm very interested to see where it's going. I don't know if he's the one who committed the first crimes that she thinks he did, but he seems a little unhinged in his chapters, but I don't know. Maybe he's just a good guy. We don't know the truth yet. He says he's gonna tell her. We also learned that she has some grief in her past and that's why she kind of 
took this field on. She was originally in psychology and she has a doctorate in that, but she went a completely different route and went in the crime field. So there's history there, but I think it'd be a spoiler, so I won't mention it, but it's getting juicy. I'm really interested to see how it ends. It's also part of a series, so I'm not sure if it's gonna be a cliffhanger. I surely hope it isn't. We'll see how it is. I'll let you know my final rating in the next clip. What am I reading? What am I reading? What is happening? But there's things happening. There is definitely things happening. Okay, what the fuck was that? I literally do not know what I just read, but I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. <laughs> The atmosphere was so good. If you like dark academia vibes, but not necessarily dark academia literature because it's boring, maybe you'll like this one. I'm not super into dark academia literature just because I find that I don't understand what's going on half the time, but this one had that same kind of vibe where you don't really know what's going on and you're trying to figure out what in the world is happening. There's so many twists and the love interest is so hot, even though he's so disturbed, but also she's disturbed in many ways. And it was just so good. It was so good. It was so well done. It was so weird. So different from everything that I've read before. I haven't read a book like this. And there's so many crimes that are interconnected. The chemistry between the two characters was off the charts. There's no denying it. There's literally no denying it. It was so good during the steamy scenes, even though the steamy scenes were so fucked up, but man, was it something else. The really creepy tone in this one was unsettling. The whole time, you just wanna know what's going on. Like, I did not wanna put this book down at all. And you were like, wait, wait, wait. My brain can't take it, you know? It was such a mind fuck. So now we're moving on to book two in this vlog. I'm reading The Devil Tainted Us, and this one, I have no idea what it's about, but I do know there's an asylum involved on a mysterious island. So I'm ready. I'm gonna dive into this one. I've gotten a few pages in, and right now we are with these two characters that are guys, they're brothers, and they're going into their parents' house to ultimately kill them, I think. I think they have a backstory, obviously. And we're in a prologue, I believe. So we're getting to see a background for one of our characters, I think, but I'm not sure. I'll let you know my thoughts like 20% in. All right, so I decided to DNF the devil that tainted us because the writing just was not jiving with me. And I really didn't like the Insta steam that was going on. Like it felt like I was only at 16 or 20% when I decided that I wasn't gonna like this book and I just don't wanna give a bad review or anything because I already know that I'm not gonna like it. I decided to put this one aside and pick up Antichrist by Ammo Jones. I love Ammo Jones books, but I've been putting this one off because I started a while ago and it just was so hard to follow. So I put it down, but I really have been wanting to read it. So I'm now at the 52-ish percent mark. And I finally have a grip on the story. This one is very, very difficult to follow. The writing's very choppy and split up and I really don't like that about the book. But I love Emma Jones' concepts, so I want to follow it through. And I'm finally kind of invested in the story. Not like completely loving it, but I'm at least curious to know how it ends. So we're following Mirakai and Nico. Those are the main two characters. It's mostly like childhood friends to lovers. So when Mirakai was younger, he had lost his brother and fled the town. And it's been 10 years since he left. And then and now we're picking up on the story, but we get like past and present tense. During the past 10 years, Mirakai has been with this abusive guy, Luca, who is in their friend group, but they always were like kind of iffy about him. So he's been abusing her and there's way more that goes into this, but I don't want to spoil anything So that's Mirakai's life and then when Nico comes back He's part of an MC club and he hates her. She hates him for leaving. He hates her I uh, don't really know why he hates her so much. I kind of like them together, but at the same time I don't really care. I mostly am here for the drama between this MC club right now and Mirakai is kind of involved in a way. So I'm excited to see the 
twist that may occur because usually Emma Jones has a twist and I've heard that the ending of this book is really wild so I'm curious to see what happens with that. It's all right. It's all right. It's probably gonna be like a three star. I'm kind of sad because Lovely Bad Things was so good so now I'm just like I need to find another good one for this video. All right, y'all, it is a lazy day today. Ignore the the look, the look. It's it's a look, it is. But I have finished Antichrist by Emma Jones and I gave that bitch a one star. It was so bad. I hated reading it. I hated my experience, but I wanted to finish it to see if there was like a twisty do. And I just could not get behind the story at all. I did not care about the two main characters. I didn't care about the romance. There was barely any smut compared to other Emma Jones books. And it was just doing way too much with so many different tropes and I just couldn't keep up with it and I didn't want to keep up with it. The writing style was so confusing from the very beginning. You are so confused and I never got out of that. That's my thoughts on Antichrist. Did not enjoy that experience. But now I'm reading Someone Else's Shadow by Monica James. This was not in the original plans but I really wanted to pick it up because it just came out. It says, it says, it's a psychological thriller romance slash suspense and it is not going very thrillingly so far. In this one we follow Peyton. She has recently lost her memories because she was in an accident. So we have amnesia trope. She ends up going back to this place that she feels like will resurface some memories because she feels connected to this place. So she buys a house in this town and it's an abandoned house and it's not constructed well. So the next door neighbor, Caden, comes in and wants to help her and they rebuild her house, whatever. She feels like they probably knew each other in her life before the accident. And he tells her like, no, you don't know me. I don't know you. But it's obvious they were lovers. So that's the plot so far. It's not giving any suspense or thriller. The only thing that's happening that is a little sketch is like she feels like she's being watched, but it's not creepy. So I'm not quite enjoying this one, but I'm enjoying it more than Antichrist. And I'm curious to know what what really happened in her past because it's clear that nobody in this town likes her and they remember who she is. But I'll let you know what I think when I finish this book. I'm at 62% right now. So I finished Someone Else's Shadow by Monica James and it did not deliver. I rated this one two stars. I did not enjoy it. I felt like it had no suspense and no thrilling aspects and it's pitched as a suspense romance and it was just told to you instead of shown. Like for instance, her amnesia is all just fixed by a character spitting dialogue. I know it's a difficult trope to do, but it's safe to say I won't be picking up any more amnesia tropes. I just can't with that trope anymore. I, I think I don't like it. I don't know. But I also just didn't feel a connection between our two characters. The romance felt like it was just told to you once again. And you were supposed to believe that they had this great love since they were eight years old. And that they just could never be together because their lives were so different. Then you end in a bunch of drama with the suspense plot. It just was not for me. And I thought it was a good concept but the execution lacked. But I did end up reading Fragmented Illusions by Marie Ann. I finished it all in one sitting so I didn't have a 50% update because I was just cruising through it. It's only about 300 or so pages but it was so spicy y'all. The spice was definitely there and it was definitely hot. I will say that much. The plot was a little bit disappointing just because our main character Peyton, she has some backstory to her character that we never really get to find out what exactly happened to make her the way that she is today. So that was a little disappointing. So I ended up rating this one 3.5. I really liked the MMF relationship that we get in this book. It's also dark romance, lots of triggers. Basically we follow Peyton and she's always been told that she's sick and she has to take medication and she hears voices and stuff like that. And then she ends up coming across this cabin in the woods and she ends up witnessing something she shouldn't have a dead body and two masked men. And they are the love interests, the two masked men. And it was juicy. And so they take her under their wing and they realize that maybe she's like them. 
I really liked it and it was a super fast and fun read. So if you wanted something smutty that has that dark romance kind of serial killer type vibe but with really disturbing backstories for the two masked men characters, I would definitely pick up another Marie Anne book. I really liked her writing style. There were like a couple grammar issues or like misspellings in the book itself but that doesn't bother me too too much with KU books. So yeah, definitely want to read Creep by her. So out of these, obviously my favorite was Lovely Bad Things by Trisha Wolf. I would definitely recommend that if you're looking for a dark romance that is original in plot and also the tension is there between our two main characters and also you're in for a wild ride with that one. And then I would probably go with Fragmented Illusions if you're looking for something super smutty and also taboo. I don't know if I mentioned it has some taboo elements in there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, I'll leave a black heart emoji and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.